In the words of Professor M from Hit Cartoon Tuned, oh dear, it's happened again. Mercedes two drivers hit each other for the second time this season, and Twitter was set ablaze with all the hot takes, as we saw the first pass for the lead on a final lap of a Grand Prix since Canada 2011. And if anything, the way Mercedes deals with these things have essentially become a repetitive cycle. Drivers have incidents, fans boo person who benefits, Total Wolf pulls an angry face and throws some indirect shade, the press act like there's a possibility they'll blow the team up, Hamilton wins a Grand Prix or two, the whole thing blows over, repeats ad nauseum. Now, I've sat from a distance and watched this, often laughing my head off, but even I have to admit, Mercedes F1 team has become the sport's longest running soap opera. And I'm not talking a good one like Coronation Street, we're talking Hollyoaks up in this bitch. And that's the most hilarious thing about Mercedes. This shouldn't be a thing. At all. Think about what we have here. Mercedes have created arguably the best Formula 1 car the sport has ever seen. They've won 40 out of the 47 hybrid era races so far. They have Lewis Hamilton, the most marketable Formula 1 driver we've seen since Schumacher, and a top 10 Hall of Fame level driver. And Nico Rosberg, a legit world title level number 2 who can score 300 points and win 6 races a year. It's as near a perfect team as you can get in modern F1. Sure, they have a 109 point lead in the championship right now, but does it feel like they have the way this season's played out? Sure, they've won 8 out of the 9 races this season, but ask any Ferrari fan, me included, and they'll probably tell you that the prancing horses left at least 2 wins on the table through strategical blunders, and Sebastian Vettel very easily could have been a title threat if it wasn't for some wretched luck on his end. Mercedes have never looked more vulnerable. From Hamilton's lack of engine parts to two collisions between their drivers costing the team a good 50 points, not to mention poor Lulu being unable to work out how to change his engine settings in Baku. Fact of the matter is, Mercedes as a team has never been more vulnerable, and trust me, if it wasn't for Ferrari and Red Bull dropping the ball on said opportunities, a lot more people would be having a conversation about this. Which is funny given how desperate we all were to make it seem like Ferrari were a bigger threat than what they actually were going into this season. Then there's Hamilton vs Rosberg 4, the quadrilogy about as necessary as that fourth Indiana Jones movie. Much has been made of their relationship after that press story about bonding in a Baku swimming pool, and that it was healthier than ever before. People, this is Formula 1, not a copy of Closer magazine. Why would anyone think that two world championship contenders, desperate to win while staying under the same roof, would ever get along? It's nonsensical, especially when so many fans beat the narrative drum over drivers being incredibly egotistical, doing anything to win, and always being better than your teammates. Now, I don't expect Nico and Lewis to get along. They shouldn't, given the circumstances. Remember? They had their own team order scandal in just their second ever race together. But when non-executive chairman and professional hype man Nicky Lauda is actively lying to the press about Hamilton's false rumour over trashing his hospitality room after his Q3 crash in Baku, one has to wonder just what the fuck is going on in that camp. Like, what do you gain from doing something like that? It makes even less sense when you consider Lewis Hamilton is Lauda's magnum opus, him being arguably the most critical factor in getting LH to sign the dotted line back in 2012. Making him out to be an angry house wrecker is just destructive in a sport that revolves around its golden child. At this point, Lada is less a chairman, more a mix of Flavor Flav crossed with a creepy uncle that runs his mouth just a little bit too much for his own good. Total Wolf is in an awful jam here. He keeps getting more heated at his driver's incompetence, yet he knows both his drivers are just too valuable as assets to realistically let go. He's the visual leader of his team, but with all the words said and next to no action to be seen, he's coming across like a substitute teacher with no backbone. Which is kind of ironic given he's 6'6". Six six. The blessing for Merck's here is that winning really does solve everything, and this team will continue to do so in F1's current state. But you have to admit the constant loop of silly behaviour out of their camp is great in, and just seems silly from what may be the greatest Formula 1 team ever. But hey, at least they're not Ferrari. A constant barrel of disappointment. More on that soon. Thanks for watching.